Today's amazing journey takes us to the home of a cannibal. Louis Hutchinson, known as the Mad Doctor, was the first unknown serial killer in Jamaica. He built his castle, he reared his cattle, and hunted his neighbors for sport. But now he's dead, got caught by the head, and got sentenced to hang in a Spanish town court. Tell me if you like my poem. Located in the Pedro district of St. Anne and situated on a low hill close to the old main road from St. Anne's Bay to Jamaica's south side is the ruins of Edinburgh Castle. The building is small and square with two floors and two circular loophole towers set at opposing corners of the building. Though the road is no longer located near to the once to lofty name castle, to passers-by today who may be unaware of the history, the ruins of Edinburgh Castle may appear as nothing more than the ruins of an old house of days gone by. However, those overlooked stones hold the historic significance of a dark time in Jamaica's history. While my goal is finding and exploring our abandoned and historical places of interest and bringing our forgotten, ignored or unknown history to the public, I take extra precautions during exploring, endeavoring always to leave everything as I find them. So while exploring these places might look appealing to most, my advice is make sure you are mentally and physically prepared for the unknown before you get started. If you enjoy these videos, I would really appreciate you giving this video a thumbs up. It is most helpful in enabling me to continue sharing my discoveries with you. Louis Hutchinson, the man and architect who built Edinburgh Castle, was said to have been the most feared, hated, and evil man of his day. Hutchinson, better known as the Mad Master of Edinburgh Castle, was born in Scotland in 1733. It is believed that at some point in his life, Hutchinson had studied medicine. He arrived in Jamaica in the 1760s and acquired property at the Pedro district of St. Anne, which he named Edinburgh Castle. Although he is said to have occupied the land legally, his collection of cattle was said to have consisted mostly of strays from neighboring pens. Cattle stealing, however, were the very least of the red-eared Hutchinson's despicable sins. History would later document that not long after Hutchinson's arrival on the island, cases of travelers disappearing without a trace began to surface, and as the numbers of disappeared ones mounted up, suspicions ran wild. During some travelers' long and tiring journey, they would occasionally stop to rest and refresh themselves at Edinburgh Castle. At that time, it was the only inhabited spot for miles around. So, on their way from St. Anne's Bay south, and totally oblivious to the welcome they were about to receive, those travelling would have seen the only inhabited place along their route as a welcome respite. No one could have suspected, let alone imagined, the horrors and humiliation those missing ones would have ended up enduring. This is the story of what must have been the most evil piece of Jamaica's history. Not sure what that is guys, but there is a, seems like a house, yeah guys, like a house up on top of the hill. So, we just come through and hold up a bush down this side. But we, like we see the castle, so we are about to hide. Yeah, peeps. Ah, I'm not sure through the bush. I see a man who I walk on a truck. I'm a kid who find a truck over there. Blessings, elder. Okay, get there, you know. Okay, so I get there. Yeah. Fix up the road. Tell you. Why, 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 yeah, man. No, no, let me get my kids set still until we reach one, no? Yeah. Yeah, peeps. So that's the castle up there, guys. Yeah. You know, part of our history. You know the history about the castle? Or Lewis Hutchinson? 
the, re, the first Jamaican serial killer cannibal. Yeah. He used to shoot people from him towers. Yeah. I used to help them when they come in the next morning and I see them. Yeah. First white man forget hanging in Jamaica also. Yeah. And them hanging my Spanish town that try to get up on the sea and just him ready here alone. Yeah. Make them spot him, is it? Yeah man, yeah. I was a Scotsman. Yeah. Uh, him dab the same castle in England now, so him come out here and trim up money him come build the castle out yeah. here, is it? Yeah. Yeah man. So some part I used to show you to boy. I come here, come here, come capture your stuff and one. Yeah. Oh him come capture it from yeah. other people. Mm -hmm. And the renovations then. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. I mean work up there. Oh you work up there? Mm -hmm. Farming going up there? No, please don't. Oh, oh, you cause the shock that really have a look on still. Cause yeah, it's but educational. You know, road, girl, right to own, you know. Okay, respect. Right. Yeah man, blessings man. The gateway down there, so. Yeah. Okay, all right, give that. Yeah. Show up on me, pa. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so blessings, yeah. Yeah, yeah, one, yeah, one. Big all up. Right. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Sure. Not knowing they would become certain target for Hutchinson's lust for blood, they were like lambs to the slaughter. Hutchinson killed for sport and not for money. The unsuspecting travelers, regardless of their status in life, were equal and easy game. It is said that he fed off the flow of blood, and often dismembered his victims whom he later left in the hollowed trunk of a cotton tree. There was a sinkhole too for vultures to finish off his victims. The hole became known as Hutchinson's Hole. People feared him, and as the fear of him took hold amongst everyone on the island, Officials who could have served him with a warrant and arrested him failed to do so. Not even his brutal and unwarranted attack on his unarmed neighbor, Dr. Otten, which left the good doctor wearing a silver plate in his head for the remainder of his life, changed a single thing. Now, Dr. Jonathan Otten and the English doctor owned the nearby Bonville plantation with around 60 slaves, 30 male and 30 females, and spent his time between Jamaica and his home in Lincolnshire. The story goes that Hutchinson had a dispute with Dr. Hutton over land boundaries. As Hutchinson felt that Hutton had encroached onto his land, and this angered him greatly. So one evening, when Dr. Hutton was riding home accompanied by one of his slaves who was carrying his sabre, when Hutchinson took the sabre from the slave and told the slave to pass on his compliments to Dr. Hutton to tell him that he had taken his sabre. Hutton either ignored or didn't realize what had taken place. Sometime later, Hutton, with his young daughter, Mary, aged about eight years old at the time, were out riding when they encountered Hutchinson, who, without provocation, struck the doctor with the same sabre which he had previously taken. Dr. Hutton was severely injured and was carried back to the estate to recover, but his recovery was poor. He managed to travel to Kingston to make a formal complaint about Hutchinson, but nothing appeared to have been done about it. And as he was so ill, he gave up and decided to make the long journey back to England for treatment. Once there, he had an operation for trepanin. He eventually returned to Jamaica a year or so later and sought to have Hutchinson arrested. Time drifted by and Hutchinson remained a free man to kill as often as he desired. In fact, his reputation for villainy was such that no one wanted to go near him if they could avoid doing so. Time passed and eventually a young English soldier by the name of John Callendar bravely set out to bring Hutchinson in, but Hutchinson calmly shot him on sight. There was an instant uproar from the rest of the country when it was found out Hutchinson had killed Callendar. The population cried out for Hutchinson's head and it was then that government authorized his immediate arrest. Unaware that soldiers would follow after him, he is said to have fled south to Old Arbor, where he set off by sea, but the Royal Navy, commanded by the Venerable Admiral Rodney, was keeping watch, and Hutchinson's speedy flight from the island was soon interrupted. The increasingly desperate Hutchinson leapt overboard from his boat, but his red ear betrayed him. He was easily spotted. Admiral Rodney was congratulated by Jamaica's House of Assembly for his assistance in apprehending Hutchinson and placing him securely behind bars. Rodney's statue now stands tall in Spanish Town Square. At length, legal proceedings against the Madmaster of Edinburgh Castle commenced, 
and soon tales of his devilry and debauchery came to light. Hutchinson's slave added their own accounts of ill treatment and his reputation for evil doing became legendary. As the unimaginable came to light, bit by painful bit, Edinburgh Castle was searched, and clothing said to have belonged to his victims were found there. 43 watches in total were said to have been found, which would give us an estimate of his victims. But not everyone wore watches in those days. Prior to his apprehension, Hutchinson's slaves, who were too petrified to rattle him due to their ignorance and terror of him, finally surrendered their long-held silence. Each slave detailed crime after crime, but all were perceived hearsay and therefore their accounts were deemed unfit to stand up in court of law. Hutchinson, who was believed to have committed numerous murders, was tried only for one murder. That was the murder of English soldier John Callender. During his trial, however, the stories of his slaves were substantiated and it was further revealed that Hutchinson had not carried out his evil acts alone. There existed a neighboring group of deviant minds who were also revealed. A few members, namely planter James Walker and Roger Maddox, were tried and found guilty and were rightly condemned to death for their own parts in the murder of farmer William Lickley and the schoolmaster Timothy Cronin. It is said that along with Roger Maddox and uh, Lewis Hutchinson, Maddox's wife, Darkus, a uh, Miss Susanna Cole and a uh, Miss Elizabeth Thomas, had sadistically watched Schoolmaster Cronin's death by strangulation while being pinioned in stocks. Cronin's watch and seal were later found in Elizabeth Thomas' possessions. Miss Thomas was tried and pled not guilty and received judgment as such. Yesterday, guys, we were in St. Thomas. To the peeps, we were in St. Thomas. You see the mountain blackbird up here? Wasn't a good place to start with. You know, look there. A mm -hmm. Guys, you know, see that? Uh, wasn't a good place to start with. Now, we had this, this tower. We had this tower up there where you, you would actually shoot persons passing on the road out there. It was a good shot, it seems. You know? But. Yeah, he used his musket to kill people from his towers. Yeah, guys. Yeah, peeps. We are at the Edinburgh Castle. Yeah. One bag of junk up here, though. Jesus Christ, look there. One bag of junk. This is a beautiful image. So, my sister, Mr. Hutchinson, wasn't a good person after all. <laughs> yeah, peace. My sister, Mr. Hutchinson, wasn't a good person after all. As you know, guys, I always do a walk around. We always do a walk around before we enter any of these premises. Yeah, it seems like the tower was here. I guess this is where the tower was. Yeah, peeps, I guess this is where the tower was. Mm-hmm. That he actually shot from. Yeah, guys, I think this is the tower because then he would have vantage point down on the road. Guys, if you don't notice, all right, look, another saw and car come. You know, see that, peeps? There he had a vantage point down on the road. Alright, then he can shoot to him and shoot on the run go down there for them. Alright, so yeah. But guys, this is a very interesting feature of Sentan. We never know so much ill in a Sentan piece. They say them say Sentan flat. But look at this guys. We're all surrounded by hills and mountains. And that's the Edinburgh Castle here, guys. As you know guys, I always left the inside for last. Just like, you know in a smaller night your food and you left the meat for last, but that's sweet. Yeah, I left the inside for last keep. No problem. <laughs> Captain Williams. 17 sub that. Never. 
1999. Guys, I have nothing to make no inscription, so I can't do that today. But it seems a lot of persons have been here. People left them inscription all over the place. Inscriptions are about Smith. So you see the Alright guys, so you notice these are indeed lookout points. The ones in the other in the other house in the in the Stokes are great house, those were for boards to be fitted in slots. Alright, these are lookout points. You see all around the building. Alright, that's why you know the big. So guys, this is in the side of the tower. And as you notice here, you have a lookout point right there, you have one right here. Now right here you would have board. You have board right here creating the step so that you could go up into the tower, all right? So right there, so maybe you would have go up and then you can see over it. It could be way higher than it is right now also. All right, so, so, I'll go to the next side of the tower now. Uh, we can give this right something on it. The people are not even right good for me can see. This is from 1920, you know. But them people are not right good for me can see them name on the inscriptions. Yeah, guys, this is another part of the tower. And as you notice, this went down to you know, guys. All right, this was filled in. This went down also. So this tower don't seem to have had a lookout point or a shooting point or anything because the road wasn't around this side, guys. The road was there. So you know, you are mostly a focus on the road who are come towards the building. All right, so here, yeah, people, this is Edinburgh Castle. We have a lot of lookout points. So nobody can really attack the place, you know. I would like Mr. Hutchinson very well please enough. And it's a souvenir guys. I'm gonna keep this as a souvenir. Honestly, I keep this type of souvenir in the comment section down below. Alright, Mr. Peace, I iron up this a little more. Alright, this looked like it was just a brace for some column or something, guys. Alright? So we're moving on. Really interesting features in this castle. Hey guys. Lewis Hutchinson was not so lucky, however. Although he insolently entered a plea of not guilty and was defended by one of the island's most esteemed lawyers, he was tried found guilty and condemned to death by hanging in Spanish Town Square. The records of his trial stand in Jamaica's National Archives. Defiant even in death, Hutchinson left funds to inscribe a two-line epitha on his marble tombstone. Quote, Their sentence, pride and malice I defy, despise their power, and like a Roman, die. End quote. His wishes as befitting the mark of such a man were ignored. Two questions that can't be ignored, however, are how did the mad doctor manage to take the saber from Hutton's slave without him knowing? And what was Hutchinson's real reason to come to Jamaica? Is it that he was already committing murders in Scotland and had to flee? Let me know what you think in the comments below. Today, the ruins of Edinburgh Castle stand silently betraying no hint of the acts of evil that took place there centuries ago. The actions of the Mad Master of Edinburgh Castle, like those of another macabre character, Annie Palmer, the White Witch of Rosal, lives on in the annals of Jamaican history. Thank you so much for watching. If you found this video interesting, intriguing or informative, please give it a thumbs up. And also, remember you can subscribe to Elite Jamaica by clicking the subscribe button. It's free of cost. Stay blessed.